Hey guys, it's Kevin. I got lots of emails from you. Ask me to put everything together, show you how to convert XP15000 from a regular printer. Your first step should uh, convert this printer into chipless. Uh, and due to many reasons, I'm not gonna show you here. You can go to uh, inkchip.net. It's .net, not .com. You can download their kit to convert your printer into chipless. And don't send me questions about how to do this. I'm not gonna show you, okay. The inkchip.net has all the resources and uh, all the helps to help go through that. This video is going to show you how to take the, the printed out and waterproof it, and also how to relocate your CSSE board so you will not ruin your printer. As opposed to release how I do the continuous ink system and the white ink management, but however, there's something happening in my life, which is called uh, fly fishing. So I have to set my priorities straight. Stay tuned, subscribe to my channel, and I'm going to show you later. I've told you this is a fly fishing channel disguised as a printer repair channel. Anyway, then we should start the printer. After restart, you can see all the ink levels are full. So we just turn this printer into chipless. And step two is relocating the CSC board. We took off the duplexer in the back and removed the paper tray in the front. I usually use a reference. You can go to bchtechnology.com and just go search for XP15000. And here's a workflow sheet for 15000, including the main, main board wiring and the printhead removal. And I'm just using this document as a guide. Okay, first on the right side, we're going to use a flathead screwdriver and remove this cover. Then those two screws, one on each side. And then we can remove this long bar. You can see I cannot do anything without reading this. Then we're going to remove the left side panel and by remove two screws, one in the back and one on the bottom. And we're going to do the same thing for the right side. I say left and right is relative to the printer when the printer is right in front of you. Now on the right side, use the screwdriver to turn this gear counterclockwise. What I'm doing is if you turn this gear counterclockwise, it's going to free the printed carriage. It's not critical. You can turn on the printer, and when the printhead carriage moves, you cut off the power. And another more elegant way is turn this gear counterclockwise. So give it a couple turns, then push the printhead carriage. If the printhead carriage can move, and you can stop. And now we remove all the cartridges. Each cartridge has a chip, right? The printer has an electronic board called a CSIC board, which reads information from the cartridge. So what you did, the chipless conversion is to let the printer doesn't care what information is read from the CSIC board. However, the board itself has to be plugged in. Otherwise, you're going to get error from the printer. So basically, the printer says no matter what ink level I read from the CSSC board, I'm going to consider it a full tank of ink. However, you have to have a CSSC board. But your problem is a DTF and the sublimation, you're going to have a lot of inks. And as a consequence, those ink leaks. When the inks leaks, here's what a CSSC board look like. Oh, actually, I should say assembly look like because this is just outside of the assembly and uh, the board is inside. So we're going to take the board relocating to somewhere else. We put a piece of plastic to prevent dirt falling into the printhead. And we remove two screws. The reason we need to move the printhead to this position all the way to the left, you have to line the printhead carriage to this hole so you can remove the second screw. I've seen lots of people yank their print head off and broke it. Come on sense, guys. Now this plastic card is cured by double-sided tape. 
it's easy just to take it off, but let me show you how to put it on. So basically, this card is outside of the cables. So you open this half, put it over the cable, then put the bottom half over the cable, then unfold at the top, and now the front. You pull it in the front, and then now it's double-sided tape, and that'll secure it. Lots of people, they, after they took it off, they don't know how to put it back. So you might want to bookmark this video, and a couple weeks from now, you can come back and see this. Now when they attach the cable, and take out this assembly, and there are four screws. We're going to take off the middle two, and then we can remove this guard. And there are like springs attached to the guard, so be careful. And I remove two outside screws, and we're ready to take this cover off. And this is the PCB board. And now we do the reverse. We put this guard back, and we put the two outside screws back. When we put the second cover back, make sure you line up the springs, and it's better just to push it down and make sure they spring back. We still need this assembly to be in place. It can secure the cartridge. We detach the cable from the CSSA board. So now you just remove that cable and drag it from inside and pull that cable out. And now reattach that cable to the CSSA board. We're going to use a piece of plastic bag and wrap around the board. And there's a gap between this silver box, which is the power supply, and the front panel. So I'm just hiding it. Now we're going to step three, waterproof the printhead. Now you're going to, to say the two screws on the printhead itself. And in the front, there's a cover. And I can't find a good way to remove it. I usually just pick it up from the middle and just let, let it fly out. And look, you see it got loosened. And you're going to find the two screws underneath. Oh yeah, pay attention to the cover end and, <laughs> and recover it. I've heard that people broke their print head and they said they broke the screw hole. How can you do that? And if you've done that, could you send me a picture of it? i never seen people can break this. If I understand how you break it, probably I can make a replacement. And I'll just show you again how I remove it. And now you can see two screws underneath. And I remove those screws. And now you can lift the print head. We go to bchtechnologies.com. And we go to accessories. Print head cover guard. We'll need an electronic grid silicone seal. And also, we're going to need a cover guard for XP15000, which is this one. I like this silicone seal because it's electronic safe and also the precision applicator is going to help you to get into narrow spaces. And underneath, we're going to see a page width sensor. That screw on the sensor is a little bit high, and it prevents the, the guard from sitting properly. So we're going to remove that screw. And we're going to waterproof this sensor itself. This sensor is low voltage, and it's highly unlikely you're going to blow out this sensor. So we don't need a, like a cable guard, because I'm not expecting you to change cables on this one. Just make it evenly and do not cover the, the black sensor itself. And now we cover another side of the board. Usually the silicon itself just will help you to secure in the position, so we don't need uh, that screw back. We're at Greensboro, North Carolina. Actually, I don't, uh, if this is too complicated, I'm thinking maybe we offer a service and for local folks to bring their printer in and we do everything for them. Just idea. So if you're interested, just contact us, see if we can make some arrangement. And now we're going to work on the print head. And we just use a silicon gel and just work all the way around. And do not seal the cable socket itself. And we just seal everything else. The reason we need a guard is because eventually we're going to change our print head. It's going to clock in the future. 
So when you change the printhead, you cannot glue your cable directly to the printhead and that could damage the cable. It's much easier if you have a guard and uh, so you just seal around the guard. When you need to remove the cable, you just remove the seal around the guard and pull the cable out so it's easier to install and uninstall. Each package will have two guards. One is spare and we'll just take one guard and go through the cable first. And when you install, give an even push. You're going to feel the cable get locked inside the, the printhead. And now we put the guard on and then just seal around the guard. Make sure you seal between the cables too. So if the ink comes down, it's not going to get into the printhead. Now we put the two screw back and the guard and two more screws. And then we put CSSC assembly. And then we put the paper guard back. And now we do step four to align the printer. Because we work on the printhead and the printhead was exposed to the error, we want to do a head cleaning and then print a nozzle check and make sure we have a good nozzle check. In the printer, we select printhead alignment and then we're going to do a vertical. And the printer is going to print the alignment page. This is why you need a good nozzle check before you do the alignment. If you do not have a good nozzle check, you will not have a correct pattern. Then just look as you print out, it says number one, find the one with the less streaks. So for row number one, when we look at them and we think number four is pretty good. And then just keep going. The reason we do alignment is because we change the height and the position of the printhead. So we want to have a good alignment before we print. And after we do the vertical and we do another horizontal alignment. And then we print the color checker and make sure all the colors are correct. So we have a before and after we do a comparison and we decide now the printer is at peak performance. You might notice I did a testing without putting the cover back. Yes, we're going to do number five, install external tank. See, this tube is secured by this metal clamp. So if you slowly put the tube away, and you're going to pull the tube out with the clamp. And now we're going to make a hole for the tube to come out. When you put the cover back, it looks like this. And we go back to bchtechnology.com and go search for waste. It really doesn't matter if you do 25 or 40. It just uh, external tube is bigger for 40. I'm just going to use 25 for example. Here's a 25 kit. You get a connector which you connect to this black tube. I lost the metal clamp which is not a big deal. It fits perfectly on this connector. Now I connect to the external tube. This is 25 tube and 40 tube is just a little bit bigger, but that doesn't matter at all. And I put a piece of Velcro to secure the bottle to the printer casing. The Velcro just prevents you from accidentally knock over the tank. Somebody uses it to suspend the bottle in the air and guess what? The bottle will fall down, <laughs> hit the table and you're going to get the ink everywhere. From your feedback, we learned some folks want a larger bottle. So we'll give you another choice of about different size of bottle in the future. And the whole point of doing this is because when you do the DTF and DTG, you get a huge amount of ink and you have to collect ink outside your printer instead of let the flow inside. Okay, looking good. Step number six is remove the pizza wheel or star wheel. Again, you're going to put a large amount of ink on the paper, film or paper. <laughs> okay, so this wheel is going to create the wheel marks, but the ink is not absorbed. Uh, so lots of people remove it. This step is optional and it's pretty easy to remove it. And I'm going to emphasize how to put it back. <laughs> To do this, your print head carriage has to be free. You can turn the printer on, and when the print head moves, cut the power off. Or remember my trick, you move that gear anti-clockwise. Is it called anti-clockwise? Counterclockwise? Oh, my brain's fried. Okay. To remove it, it's super easy. There are two screws. 
and one on the left and one on the right. Don't pay attention to the top row of screws. Those does need to be removed. So you remove the screw, it comes with a metal piece. Pay attention here. Here's the metal spring to push the star wheel down. So on the right side, you can just lift it up. The spring is going to fall underneath. Okay, see that, like that. On the right, it's a little bit different. You still have, have that long piece of spring, but also you have this little guy, the coil spring. I've seen other videos, they just yank it off. Yeah, what happens if you regret you want to convert it back to a normal printer? <laughs> okay, if you can find your springs like half a year from now, and let me give you a close-up so you can refer to this video and figure out how the spring is going to line up. So they kind of work against each other. You get a dental tool and you can put this spring underneath and then just repeat what you did on the right side. Here, I just use my finger to put that coil spring down and then now I can lift the thing. Once you can lift up both sides, move your printer carriage all the way to the right. Dig your finger underneath the printer carriage and vertically lift up the printer carriage and you can remove the star wheels. Again, the install is more difficult than removal. So let me just go over how I install it. I'll install it back. I roughly put it underneath. And don't worry about the spring. We just put the right side in the correct spot. Even if the spring caught underneath, you can correct later. And once the right side is in spot, we move to the left side. So I try to use my finger to bring up the coil spring. And I use a dental tool to bring up the what's it, the rod or the spring, the vertical spring, and now it's installed. I'll put a link to the dental tools in the description. It's ten bucks. And now I'll move to the right side. If you didn't put the spring up, and now it's your time. Just lift it up and flip that rod on top of your star wheel. And then to put the last screw back. And uh, you're done. Okay, if you're interested in other of my cool projects, please follow my channel. And next time I'm going to convert this to a DTF printer. So we can have two printers on a big night like this. My 1800 slowly prints like a page by pages. Now if I can add like a couple hundred dollar printer and then make two DTI printers, I won't have to work until 2, 2 a.m. And my daughter's artist, if you want to commission her to do some projects, just let me know. Okay, I hope you enjoyed this video. Visit us at www.bchtechnology.com or locally at Greensboro, North Carolina. Cheers. There you go. Okay. Yep. Point to him. Point to him. Point to him. Okay. Yep. Get that rock to fly. There you go, bro. Go. Let go. Let him run. There you go. Let him do his thing. He's going to eventually turn. He'll eventually turn. Fish that goes up river. That's crazy, right? <laughs> Come on, what? Start reeling in. Real. Real. Rods up higher. Real, real. We're moving. Walk. Okay, don't bounce. Don't bounce. Okay, that's good. We've got control. We're in good shape. We're in good shape. Fish that goes up river, you know. That's crazy. That's a good fish too. Yep.
Okay. <laughs> okay, find that call fish. There's your 21 inch, brother. There's your big fish of the day. Wow. We got all wrapped up, but. Yeah, we got wrapped. Ooh. That's pretty good. <laughs> 